Okay, before we move on with learning more blocks that we can use to program when we're working with Scratch, I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about some of the things that you may have observed me do when I was moving bricks around, moving commands around, and writing programs. And so this video, this lesson is basically some helpful hints for editing when you're working with Scratch. The first thing is what happens when you want to kind of take an existing program, an existing set of commands, and you want to separate blocks or separate commands. And so the first thing you probably have noticed me do, uh, and, and something that you yourself have maybe noticed as you've played, is that when you left click on a block, you end up grabbing that block and everything below it, right? So when I left click on move 50 steps here, I end up pulling off not only move 50 steps and turn 45 and move 150, right? I move all three of those commands. Uh, so the challenge is, if suppose I just wanted to get rid of move 50 steps, right? I actually have to do that in two steps. I have to pull down on the move 50 steps, and then I have to pull down on everything below it so that I isolate that one block. And now I can throw it away. Uh, I normally throw away by simply dragging over here to the left and dropping it. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't really want to throw it away at this point. Uh, but, but that's uh, what happens when we're, when we're moving stuff around. Um, the way I want you to think about this, remember I talked about the fact that this is sort of like stacking up a bunch of Lego bricks, and it's really that same idea. Um, although you have to think sort of upside down here. With Lego bricks, we build from the bottom up. With programming in Scratch, we program from the top down. Well, with Lego bricks, if I grab a brick in the middle of a large stack of bricks and I pull on that brick, I end up pulling off that brick and everything that's stacked on top of that brick. Well, the same idea is true here in Scratch. When I grab a command or a block in Scratch and pull on it, I grab that block, that command, and in this case, everything below it. Because again, we're working from the top down now. And so that's just something you have to be aware of as you're, as you're moving things around, that there is no good way when you have a big block of code to sort of isolate one block on its own, one command on its own. You have to do that in a two-step process. Now related to that is what happens when you want to, uh, I, I mentioned earlier there's more than one way to throw things away. Again, the way I do it is to tend to grab it and just throw it over here and let go and then it disappears. There's a different way, maybe the preferred way from the creators of Scratch, although one that I use a little bit less, and that is that if you right click on a brick, you'll notice that you get a little pop-up menu and there's in there duplicate and delete and, and add comment and help. I'm gonna focus in this lesson on the duplicate and delete. Uh, suppose uh, that I wanted to delete move 50 steps. Well, I could right click on the move 50 steps and say delete. The problem is just like when I grab this, I end up deleting, uh, I end up grabbing from the move 50 steps on down. When I do the delete, I end up grabbing from that point on down. I'm going to undelete that. Right? So again, this is a, a common mistake that users will make. They want to just throw away just move 50 steps, and so they right click on the move 50 steps and say delete. But again, you delete everything at that point. If your students do this and go, help, help, what do I do? Well, just go back over to undelete, right? and you can get that back. So if you wanted to delete the move 50 steps, you actually have to isolate it by doing the two-step separation again, and then right click on it and delete. Now, you'll notice there's another thing, uh, another option in here, in addition to delete when I, when I right click, and that's to duplicate. And so just like we can cut and paste things in a word processor or a spreadsheet, we can cut and paste uh, when we're working with uh, code in Scratch. And again, just like when you grab a block in the middle, you get everything from that block down, the same thing happens with delete. So if I wanted for some reason to take these three blocks and use them again, oh, maybe I want to take these four blocks. I want to be able to see the weight one second. If I right click on the weight, you'll see that I get the option to duplicate and delete. Notice the menu is the color of the brick you've grabbed. And so I can duplicate. And now automatically, already stuck to my cursor, is a complete copy of everything from the brick I clicked on on down. And so this is a good way when you're, when you're sort of doing something repetitively, when you want to repeat the same two or three commands over and over again, you can put together the two or three commands and then right click on them and duplicate. Right? Right click on them 
and duplicate and you can get all sorts of these and of course if I right click on this and duplicate I, I get a block of the whole thing and so you, you can use this to clean things up separate commands copy commands duplicate commands all of these things work from that concept of from the point of the brick you're grabbing down okay and so just some things to to be aware of as you're moving around with scratch the final thing I want to incorporate into this video is something that you may have observed when you were exploring uh, absolute motion and relative motion and maybe something that you see come up a little bit later and that is the fact that Scratch doesn't actually always do what you've told it to do or what you think you've told it to do. Let me give you just a little example of this. I'm going to actually pull these blocks away for a second. I want you to look just at this command, right? We do my places everybody and we wait one second. And right now I say move 500 or 50 steps. Suppose I put in here 500, right? I want it to move 500 steps. Well, we learned earlier when we talked about absolute movement that that this stage is 240 pixels in the positive and 240 in the negative, right? This left edge of the stage is an X value of 240. Again, you can see that down here at the bottom that when I'm uh, over on the edge, I'm at 240. Well, so that would mean that if I moved 500 steps, I'd move the 240 to get to the edge, and I'd still have 260 more to go. So we'd expect the, the cat to be way off the screen if I do that. But notice that when I, when I run this, that the cat doesn't in fact go way off the screen. He just goes to the edge of the screen. We can just barely make him out there. And in fact, you'll see that he didn't go to f f 500 steps like I asked him to. He only went 271 steps, right? And so this is one of the oddities that you will uh, experience with Scratch that you just need to be aware of. And that's the fact that uh, Scratch doesn't want you to lose your actors by sending them way off the edge of the screen or way down here or even way up high, right? We don't want to get the, the, your sprites lost. And so Scratch will normally move them to the edge of the screen till only a few pixels of them remain visible and then they will stop even if you've told it to move beyond that point. So just something to be aware of as you are moving forward with your programming in Scratch. Now, we, in this lesson, we looked at tips for programming with Scratch, some tips for editing with Scratch, how the copy and the d duplicate and the delete all work. In the next lesson, we're going to move on with more new programming blocks, and we're going to learn about using the pen menu.